Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for August 16th, 2023. Glad that you are with me. Today is National Roller Coaster Day, National Rum Day, National Tell a Joke Day, National Work from Home for Wellness Day, Bennington Battle Day, and Eka People's Day. Go ahead and get started. Jesus says, Take heart, I am here. Do not be afraid. Come, Holy Spirit, kindle the fire of faith in our hearts. Amen. And amen. Our reading for today comes from Exodus chapter 18, starting with verse 1. Listen for God's word to speak to you. Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law heard of all that God had done for Moses and for God's people, Israel. How Adonai had brought Israel out of Egypt. After Moses had sent away his wife, Zipporah, his father-in-law Jethro took her back, along with her two sons. The name of one was Gershom, for he said, I have been an alien in a foreign land. And the name of the other, Eleazar, for he said, The God of my father was my help and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came into the wilderness where Moses was encamped at the mountain of God, bringing Moses' sons and wife to him. He sent word to Moses, I, your father-in-law Jethro, am coming to you with your wife and her two sons. Moses went out to meet his father-in-law. He bowed down and kissed him. Each asked after the other's welfare, and they went into the tent. Then Moses told his father-in-law all that Adonai had done to Pharaoh and to the Egyptians for Israel's sake. All the hardship that had beset them on the way and how Adonai had delivered them. Jethro rejoiced for all the good that Adonai had done to Israel in delivering them from the Egyptian. Jethro said, Blessed be Adonai who has delivered you from the Egyptians and from Pharaoh. Now I know that Adonai is greater than all gods because God delivered the people from the Egyptians when they dealt arrogantly with them. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, brought a burnt offering and sacrifices to God. And Aaron came with all the elders of Israel to eat bread with Moses' father-in-law in the presence of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So our reading for today, we have Jethro, who um, goes by a different name earlier on in Exodus. But he comes to Moses to bring Zipporah, Moses' wife. Moses and the people are now at Sinai. They've made it to the mountain. Um, and they're sort of preparing for what's to come next. And so this is a little bit of a crossover. This is a little bit of a sort of, we're beginning the transition from this testing time to this time on the mountain. But we're still in the time of testing in some ways. Well, we'll see that in tomorrow's lesson. But Jethro comes And Jethro is an interesting character because he is a priest of Midian, um, but he also presents, or not presents, but he represents the nations. He, He represents 
those who are not actually from the the tribe of Israel, the descendants of Abraham, who might be blessed through the blessing of God. So remember back to Abraham. God calls Abraham and says, I'm going to bless you and through you all the nations of the world are going to be blessed. During the time of Israel, there are sort of these folks, Eleazar, for instance, who align themselves with Abraham, receive blessing, but also there's this sort of uh, duplication of blessing, right? It is very clear that this blessing is not um, a blessing that has been divided, right? It's, it's multiplied instead. It's not that the blessing of God is, is sort of also shared with someone else, but that both of them are well blessed. And so there are these sort of connections. In fact, the end of Genesis ends with this idea of, of Egypt and Israel becoming coming together and the and the abundance because Joseph is put in charge of all of Egypt and, and there's this abundance and this grace and this wonder and this blessing that overflows. And so in the same way, Jethro comes and hears, representing sort of Gentiles, the nations, someone who is not a descendant of Abraham, at least not of Jacob, right? Um, he's actually a descendant of Abraham, but um, so he's not that far. He's still a cousin, but he's not of this sort of these particular tribes, the Israelites. Um, but he sees all the wonders that God has done. He hears of the stories of what has happened with Egypt. He sees these people who used to be enslaved and now are free. And he praises the Lord. He praises God. He says, this is an amazing and wonderful thing. And again, he's a priest. It doesn't say specifically of whom he is a priest. Now, there are some who, you know, when they tell the story, they assume that he has followed the um, the God of Abraham. And so he is a priest, not, of course, according to the Levitical order, which has not even been set up yet, uh, but a, a priest nonetheless of the living God, the God of Abraham. But it doesn't say that specifically. It is maybe just as likely that he is a priest of some other god. But it doesn't matter because he here recognizes that the Lord, Adonai, the God of the Israelites, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, is in fact the Lord that is greater than all gods. Right? This is the the greatest of the gods, and this is um, this will characterize the Israelites' sort of belief for a while. This is not um, monotheism yet. It's not the belief that there is one and only one God. This is another word that is escaping me. I think it's mono tree. I don't know. I have to think about it. Um, but the idea of that there is there are gods, right? They in the ancient world they look around themselves and they see all sorts of idols. They see all sorts of people who worship various gods. Those peoples are powerful, and therefore the assumption is that their gods are also powerful. There is sort of no idea that there is not there's only one god. That's not a something that is quite they're quite ready for they see the sort of effects or they believe they see the effects of lots of different gods the ultimate question then is who is the most important god who is the greatest god so we talked a lot about the conflict with egypt it was a lot the conflict between Adonai and the gods of Egypt, who is more important. And there's a lot about those strikes, those plagues, that really say very clearly, 
I am the God of all things. I am more powerful than the Nile. I am more po powerful than Heket, your frog god. I am more powerful even than Ra, the god of the sun, because I can blot the sun out. And you are surrounded by darkness that you can feel for three days. There is much about the, that conflict that is not that God is the only God, but that God is the most powerful of gods, that God is the, the greatest of all gods. And this is the thing to which Jethro comes. He says, now I know, I have seen this thing, and now I recognize and realize that Adonai, the Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, this is the God who is greatest of all the gods. Because look, we thought the gods of of Egypt were pretty amazing, and God dealt with them. So he praises God. Um, they make burnt offering and sacrifices to God. And we have here a picture of the nations coming together with Israel and celebrating together the living God. This, is, this will become this image, this idea of gathering at this mountain and all the nations coming and bringing their treasures. This will be a, a common theme, a common image. The last thing I want to talk about real quick is these names for Moses' sons. Now we've heard these before, but just to, to reflect on them. The first one is Gershom. Um, I believe that it has been or it, in the text already. And it literally means an alien, a stranger in a strange land, um, because that's how he felt about himself. This was a child born while he was in the land of Midian before he had been called by God. And so that's this identity as an outsider, as an alien is very important to him. The next one is Eliezer. Um, El be meaning God and Azer meaning helper, um, meaning a uh, victorious uh, ally um, or helping ally or, or uh, saving ally is probably the best. Um, this is an idea of someone who comes alongside and gives victory when victory could not be possible otherwise. That's an Azer, not just a helper. Um, like an assistant, but a helper, like one who comes to your aid. It's the like cavalry in a in a western movie, right? They come at the at the right time and save you. Why that's interesting is, and we'll hear this in a few weeks. Um, this is the word that describes in the second creation narrative when God takes a rib from Adam, the, the human being, and creates a woman as a helper, she is an azer. She is a helping ally. She is an ally through whom victory could not be accomplished. Which is a very different, that's literally what the word is. We see it here, we see it other places, usually describing God who comes and defends us. Um, or, or God's people or whatever it is. Um, so just an interesting idea and not something that the Western church especially has translated. Because the way that that's translated usually is, oh and here's the woman, she's... She's an assistant. She's a helper. She's definitely less important than the man. Um, she's there to kind of like, you know, she's a sous chef. She is the assistant. She assists you. Um, that sort of idea. There's a definitely this idea of hierarchy, whereas the original language, it's very much, she is the one who is going to come and allow you to actually multiply. She is the one that uh, we have been working towards as this azer. You need an azer. There's no other animal that is suitable for that companion. Um, here is woman. She is this azer. She is this uh, victorious ally. So anyways, that was a, that was a sidebar. But anyways, um, 
consider what does it what does it mean this sort of idea of gathering together and praising God together this image of Jethro representing the nations coming to Moses hearing of God's great good grace and work and praising God Adonai the Lord above all other gods what does that mean for sort of our relationship with folks of other religions what does it mean as us Gentiles those who were far off who have now been grafted into this family who have been adopted into the the people of God I invite you to take some time to reflect to consider to pray to meditate to journal and when you're ready we'll join our hearts together in prayer Lord Jesus Christ help us to recognize you when our neighbors say I am sick Give us minds to know you, hearts to love you, and strength to serve you this day and always. Amen. We pray this day for the needs of our congregation and community. We pray for Brock, who is going to be having eye surgery. For Ethan, a friend of Bill's who has strep throat. For the Mayfields and their continued house hunting. For Brianna's friend's mother who's suffering from stage 4 pancreatic cancer. For Tom, a friend of Amy's who has lung cancer. For Zoe, a granddaughter of Amy, who's been at the Mayo Clinic since July and will be discharged soon. For Viola, with an online request for wholeness and healing. And for all those other prayers that we have on our hearts and minds. We pray that you would help us to build congregational vitality. Dismantle structural racism. Eradicate systemic poverty. Lord Jesus Christ, we remember our neighbors and we ask ourselves, when did I care for you? Bless what we have done. Forgive what we have failed to do and make us ready to meet you when you come in glory. Amen. Now let us continue to pray using the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Jesus says, I am with you always. Thanks be to God. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. 
Thank you so much for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else. Click on the subscription and the notification button. Go to our website, johncalvinchurch.org, for more information. Our liturgy today came from the book of... No, I'm sorry, it didn't. It came from the Presbyterian Mission Agency's Matthew 25 resources. Our reading came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible with my own tweets. You can watch this daily prayer on YouTube. You can listen to it on your podcast uh, thing of choice. Um, and you can get an email with both of those by signing up at Spotify, uh, Substack, excuse me. Um, that will just, you just put your email in and it'll just come to your, your email every day. Thank you for joining me. Have a blessed day and we'll see you next time.